Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Glad, glad to see that the microphone's working this week. My good friend from Georgia just asked the operative question, how can we impeach if we don't get the documents? How can we impeach if we don't get the documents? Ladies and gentlemen, this hearing is not about the Attorney General. It's not about the Mueller report, 92% of which everyone in America has had the opportunity to read. It's not about the fact that even the portions that the American people haven't been able to read, the chairman's been able to go read had he chosen. This is all about impeaching the president. Now, why don't they just say it? Why don't they just jump to the impeachment proceedings like their liberal media overlords are telling them to do? Well, the reason is that the American people don't support impeachment. And it's easy to understand why. They actually went and elected Donald Trump, president of the United States. And I don't think people are going to support impeaching a president who's doing so well. I mean, you got 3.2% growth in the economy. The Trump economy is hot. And the reason we're doing so well is as a consequence of the president's policies. And so at a time when my Democrat colleagues are focused on the next election and not solutions to the problems facing Americans, they can't attack the president's policies because people are doing well. So typically they roll next to identity politics that based on what you look like, who you pray to or who you love, you can't possibly support Republicans. But African Americans are doing better. Hispanics are doing better. Women are doing better. We are seeing a rising tide that is truly lifting all boats in this country. And so now we have this effort not to argue with policies, not to typically go to the identity politics that functions as the organizing principle of today's Democratic Party. They have to delegitimize the guy that the won, delegitimize the guy that people voted for, but they don't have the guts to do it directly, and so they're going after the Attorney General. Now, the gentleman from Georgia in his last remark said, we are hiding behind the rules. Hiding behind the rules. These are federal laws that dictate what the Attorney General can and cannot do. We're not hiding behind the rules. We just like to follow them. By the way, it's not following the rules that got us in this trouble in the first place. When the Inspector General testified before us, he said it's the fundamental fact that during the investigations of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, you saw continuous examples of a one-off here, a violation of protocol there. The Inspector General said never before had he seen a circumstance where the very same team that was investigating Hillary Clinton would then go and investigate the other person that was involved in the 2016 presidential contest. About a month ago, in this committee, I laid out the stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And I think that folks watching at home can probably follow along and see where we're headed. First, my Democratic colleagues were in denial. When they saw that there was no collusion after saying for 22 months that the president was an agent of the Russian government, after saying for 22 months that there was actual evidence of collusion, they were in denial when they saw the conclusion that there wasn't. Then there was anger. It had to be the attorney general's fault. Mueller didn't make a decision on obstruction. Somebody had to. The attorney general did. So they got mad at him. And we had this whole kerfluffle of anger. Well, now we know the third step, bargaining. Well, Mr. Attorney General, you've given us 92% of the Mueller report, but we have to bargain for the remaining 8% because that's really where we think the action is. Well, Mr. Attorney General, you spent five hours before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Three of our presidential candidates got to question you. You offered to come before the House Judiciary Committee. You offered to come for an additional hour of questioning. But we have to bargain so that our staff lawyers can ask you questions. Now, I don't think it's a good sign that the next sign after bargaining is depression. So I, I feel for my Democrat colleagues, but after that we get to acceptance, and that's sure something that I'm looking forward to, because there are some really good ideas that my Democratic colleagues have once they kind of get to acceptance on the no Russia collusion thing. My, my friend, the gentleman from Rhode Island, has excellent ideas about how to change the way that consumers interface with big tech companies. My, my colleague from the state of New York is right, that if the First Step Act is the only step act, then there's, then that would be a bad thing. We need to do more on criminal justice reform. My, my colleague uh, who's not with us from California, Mr. Swalwell, he's got great ideas to unlock potential cures with medical cannabis reform, but we're not doing any of those things. And by the way, I bet a bunch of my friends on the other side of the aisle low-key wish that their actual bills that would impact the lives of Americans would get heard instead of this garbage. The Obama administration ran an intel operation against the Trump campaign. Peter Strzok opened it up, the dossier kept it going, and now the Democrats need to get over it. 
I yield back.